About a year after General Motors shut down Cruise's robo-taxi business, the company is quietly moving back to autonomy, but this time with a very different approach. Instead of robo-taxis, GM is developing a new fleet of automated test vehicles focused on level 3 driver assistance, or what the industry calls eyes off driving. The technology is being built into production vehicles like the Cadillac Escalade IQ and GMC Yukon, and GM says it's designed for personal vehicles, not ride hailing. To break down what GM is actually building, why Cruise still matters, and how close this really is to hitting the road, I want to bring in the reporter who covered this story for Automotive News, Lindsay Van Hulley. Lindsay, thanks for joining me. Let's start with the big picture here. GM shut down Cruise's robotaxi operations last year as it opted to pivot towards advanced driver assistance technology in personal vehicles. But this article shows Cruise tech is still very much alive inside GM. What exactly changed in GM's strategy? At the end of the day, it was really the robotaxi. They had gotten into Cruise several years ago. They, they had self-driving Chevrolet Bolts that were actually operating with, with paying passengers in, in a few cities, and they had big plans for that. And by the end of last year, it got to a point where they kind of recognized how they described it was, robotaxi is not our core business. You know, at the end of the day, we manufacture vehicles. And Robotaxi is a, it's a, it requires a whole fleet. It requires, um, you know, depots where they can be maintained and refueled. It's a whole different set of operations than, than what their kind of core business is of manufacturing vehicles. And, you know, Cruz had had um, a crash with a pedestrian in San Francisco in the fall of 2023 that had kind of halted operations for several months and until they began to restart with some testing early in 2024. But ultimately, by the end of last year, decided that the the better focus on autonomy was to focus on uh, advanced driver assistance technology, you know, toward personal autonomy and personal vehicles. GM is now focusing on a level three system instead of robo taxis. Can you explain what level three eyes off driving actually means and how it's different from Super Cruise today? So Super Cruise today is what they call a hands-free, eyes-on system. So when it's activated, you're, you can take your hands off the wheel, and the vehicle will, will do the driving. It can change lanes. It keeps you in the center of the lane. Uh, but you're required to keep your eyes on the road at all times. And when the system activates and says you need to retake control, it it issues a series of, of lights and beeps and, and haptic signals so that you are um, because you're paying attention, you're able to take over at, at a moment's notice. With the system that they're developing now, it will be hands, hands free and eyes off. And so what they are talking about is a system that will work on the highways. It'll allow you to take your hand off the wheel. You get time back is how they've phrased it, that you're able to do something else while the car um, is engaged. There aren't very many um, automakers right now that have, uh, very few actually, that have um, level three systems in in the market. It's it's essentially a system that that does the driving when activated in a defined area, like a highway. Um, but a human is required to take over when you know the system requests. These test vehicles are Escalade IQs and GMC Yukons, not the modified Chevy Bolts that Cruz used before. How is GM building out this new test fleet, and how do these vehicles differ from the ones Cruz operated during the robotaxi phase? So Cruise used electric Chevrolet Bolts, and they were modified with the self-driving technology. Um, those vehicles actually are still out there being uh, used as sort of data collection vehicles. But um, what they're doing now with the new test fleet is is taking production versions, the same ones that come off the assembly line for, for consumers, um, the Escalade IQ and the GMC Yukon SUVs, and they are um, kind of equipping them and converting them into a test fleet. And so uh, they're, they're putting in sensors on the roof. They're putting in LIDAR and radar and cameras um, inside the vehicle, outside the vehicle, and equipping them so that they can go and, and gather, gather road data. Right now, they're all being driven by, uh, by human drivers. The, the plan is that the Escalade IQs on the road as part of that fleet will, uh, will one day um, operate you know, in, in automated driving uh, supervised by a human. Uh, that, that is not happening yet. So any of the vehicles that are out there right now are being driven by a human. But they're really trying to build out a fleet of vehicles um, that, that can drive not just in Michigan but across the country, being able to kind of gather uh, data about, about incidents and, and trying to really uh, engage and develop um, 
a, a simulation model that that can can be trained and and ultimately be deployed in a in a safe way. Safety comes up a lot in your reporting. What is GM doing differently this time to prove the system is safe, both to regulators and to customers? I think the fact that the vehicles are not yet operating in automated mode on public roads uh, is is one of those examples. They talked about, you know, they want to do this when it's ready, and ultimately they're not at that point yet where they can feel like um, the person behind the wheel, the people on the road, can can trust that it's going to work as intended all the time and, and as safely as possible. And so they're trying to develop a system really that can be trusted, that customers can trust that they can take their hand off the wheel and, you know, ultimately down the road, you know, their eyes off the wheel and and that it's going to be, um, you know, done in a way that that it, that is safe. I think that that trust piece is what they've talked about a lot, that if it if it's going to work the way that people expect it to, that they can trust that it will do that, that's how you build confidence in that kind of system. And so for for GM, you know, that safety piece, I think, is is going to be paramount. And not just with the technology, but also um, all of the equipment in their test fleets as well. You know, they have sensors on the roof. They have computing technology in, in the back of the vehicles. You know, they're making sure that all of those are secure, you know, that the roof rack won't fly off or that if it is if it is um, in a crash at some point, that 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 is going to be um safe. So it's trying to make sure that the technology works as it's supposed to, but that also the physical vehicles as well, all of the equipment is also um, safe and secured. GM says this system could debut in the Escalade IQ around 2028. How confident is the company in that timeline? And what still has to happen before it gets there? It's still in development. And this test fleet, I think, is a big part of that. They're, they are working right now to just gather as much data as they can. And what they talked about when we went out to go visit, we actually rode along in one of the Tusk collection vehicles. They have really talked about trying to gather as much unique driving data as possible. That in the beginning, there, there's so many unique events because, you know, the data collection is new and that over time, you know, they're a lot of things are, are are repetitive. They see a lot of the same things. And so trying to just gather data in, in hundreds of thousands of road miles across this test fleet, being able then to, to train that into some of the uh, simulation models that the cruise team has brought over, this ability to kind of train the model to understand, uh, you know, incidents that might happen Um not necessarily even waiting to validate something that happened in the real world, like a crash or an evasive action, but, you know, you can train that that model on a simulation. You can kind of um, virtually create these kind of edge cases and see how the vehicle would react before they get into a situation where they have to react in the, in the real world. So a lot of that development is still ongoing. They also did say, you know, 2028 is the timeline for this. And, you know, when I asked GM about that, they said, you know, there's a lot of resources being deployed around this. The company is kind of pointing in this direction and everybody wants this to happen. And so that's the timeline that they're working toward. One thing that stood out was GM's emphasis on scale, building autonomy for vehicles that roll off assembly lines every 75 seconds. Why is scaling this technology so much harder than running a robo-taxi fleet? You know, in a robo-taxi fleet, you have, you know, a, a select number of vehicles and they're parked in a depot and they can be maintained and refueled and and kept up overnight. And and you know you, you have sort of com- complete control over that that fleet. Um, a production scale vehicle is much different. You know when you're putting out a technology that's consumer facing that people will use and interact with, the the volume of that theoretically becomes a lot higher. You want it in more in more models, and so you know you have to you know really kind of figure out what that looks like on the assembly line. And, you know, not just that, but how are customers going to use it? You know, everything from how you package the the sensors on the roof so that, you know, if they're parked outside, what happens when they get cold or, you know, in a snowy winter, you know, somebody's brushing off the roof and, you know, all of those kinds of things, trying to make sure that that they're they're packaged in a way and and built in a way that that A can handle the the scale of the assembly line and also are practical for for use in with, with everyday customers. Because once they're out there, it's not like all the customers are going to park their vehicles in a depot at the end of the day where all of that can be taken care of. And so I think when when GM talks about bringing in the cruise technology and its team and its processes with 
the team that has worked on on Super Cruise, that's one of the things I think that that they leverage one of GM's strengths, which is just that manufacturing know how. You know, they know how to build vehicles at scale. They're they're figuring out things like you know how you calibrate sensors after the after they leave the assembly line, so that when they drive off, they they work properly. Um, so all of those sorts of things now they're trying to figure out how to do that um, in a much bigger scale than just, you know, the, the, the fleet of vehicles that they're operating, uh, you know, that those vehicles can run multiple trips uh, in, in kind of a robo taxi setting before returning back to kind of that central location each night. So it's definitely a much bigger operation, you, knowing it's going to start small, it's going to start on the Escalade IQ uh, in 2028. But, you know, they've talked about, you know, having this be available across multiple models and multiple vehicle sizes. And so figuring out how to be able to develop the technology and then scale it across vehicles is is going to be one of the challenges. So while Cruise as a robo-taxi brand may be gone, GM's investment in autonomy clearly isn't. The company is betting that bringing self-driving tech into everyday vehicles slowly, deliberately, and at scale is a safer and more realistic path forward. And if you want to see more on this, Lindsay spent more time talking on our Shift podcast. You can check that out at autonews.com slash podcast slash shift. Episode will be up and out on December 21st. For more details on GM's level three plans, Cruise's role inside the company, and what this means for the future of hands-free driving, head to autonews.com.